Hey, Faith family, welcome to the Beyond Sunday podcast at Calvary Bible, where we go beyond the Sunday sermon to explore some rabbit holes and to bring some biblical truths to the surface. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. All right, welcome back to Beyond Sunday. Randy, welcome back. Thank you. It's been a week, but only a week. Mm -hmm. Hey, so I'm going to hit you just straight up with a joke this week. Um, Already. Yeah, uh, my wife told me to stop impersonating a flamingo, so I had to put my foot down. (laughs) <laughs> that's lame i heard that one on the Very dad lame. joke thing it's a pretty good one that's good yeah i think that was a legitimate laugh there that you guys heard no that was insincere <laughs> oh goodness working on my acting skills all right so thank you for the insincerity <laughs> um we are going to talk about a very sincere person in the person of Jesus mm-hmm. this week uh, so we mm-hmm. got to in matthew we got to the first main teaching block you know, mm-hmm. Jesus has had a few words already, but this is the first main teaching block, five through seven in mm-hmm. Matthew, are covering this, what's commonly called the Sermon on the Mount. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's exciting to get into it. We've got the Beatitudes, which you were gracious and you you amused me uh, by telling me where that word came from, from a Latin, mm-hmm. a Latin word. Beatus. Beatus. Does so you can I, see Beatitudes, Beatus, yeah. blessed. Be, so it's a, it's the word for blessed. Mm-hmm. I always just figured it was, hey, these are some attitudes that you need to have. Be mm. be these. Well, that was one of the popular, I, f- I forget the copyright, but it was one of those popular treatments of the Beatitudes was B-E and then attitudes. So the B-attitudes. And I don't know what, I, I mean, I want to say someone like Warren Wiersbe, but yeah. I don't know if that's the guy that came up with that. But you may have heard that. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. We had that yeah. whole B series. So <clears throat> I think that the, um, so maybe uh, if you don't mind. So take that angle, for instance. If if you only look at the Sermon on the Mount this week and you say, this is what I'm going to be, mm-hmm. right? And now you've put the, uh, you have put the responsibility on you to be these things. So when I look at this Sermon on the Mount, remember, I think that what's important for uh, putting this text into practice is, first of all, dealing with the the pronouncement of blessing, as opposed to thinking, this is what I need to be. I need to be poor in spirit today. Mm -hmm. There is some truth to that. So again, when we talk like this, it's it's not like they got it wrong. It's just think about the priority of the, the Sermon on the Mount so far. So uh, what I was thinking about uh, with uh, Beyond Sunday was when someone says, how do you apply the Beatitudes? Mm-hmm. If, if someone said, how do I put this into practice this yeah, week? I'm going to ask you that. The first thing is mm-hmm. to celebrate. And so uh, that was that's sort of what I was saying to myself earlier, but also uh, wanting to say to you that if you're trying to uh, go beyond Sunday into the Beatitudes and let that that section of text uh, percolate a little bit, then we probably want to start with the announced blessing as something for us to celebrate. Mm-hmm. We should hear this and, and go, oh, well, this is the best news that, that we can have. Yeah. Your comment about, your comment about uh, first about, you know, this is the first major teaching section mm-hmm. in Matthew. Well, that does make the Sermon on the Mount really, really important for what Matthew's going to do as far as presenting the, the, the life of Christ, the earthly life of God with us is sort of the way we frame this. So it's the first major teaching from chapter five through chapter seven. So it is a big deal. Mm-hmm. When you read the material about how to interpret the Sermon on the Mount, everyone gets hung up on what comes next, but they skip the blessed part. In other words, if you start to focus on, wow, these are impossible demands of the kingdom. Right. uh, If you start to talk like that, you're missing, I think, the very first. The first response for us should be, this is great news, especially in this world. Okay. So, I mean, I've never thought that these are impossible demands. They just seem a little bit backwards, like not what you would expect. Yeah. Which you mentioned. Yeah. The impossible impossible commands are going to come, though, uh, with... um, uh, you mean later in the sermon? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I just gotcha. wanted to. Uh, so what happens is Jesus' sermon. Yeah, as you get into this sermon, uh, all of a sudden you have, oh my goodness, every one of these, um, every every one, every part of his teaching seems to be 
accentuated, accelerated beyond whatever they taught before. You mm -hmm. heard it said, but yeah. that, which you're very familiar with that. Yeah. So I was thinking, though, toward the end of the sermon where he says, uh, if I remember correctly, you have to be perfect at the end of chapter five. Mm -hmm. You therefore must be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. Gotcha. So there's the quintessential. That's the demand that everybody reads and goes. We, yeah, we can't do that. Right. And I will, I mean, I hopefully I will be able to explain um, where does faith come in in the Sermon on the Mount? Why isn't there anything about faith in it? Um, mm -hmm. I, I can talk to you about, I don't want to go into all the details of the interpretation of the Sermon on the Mount, only to say that part of the problem that we've had trying to interpret it is um, we just sort of forget about the blessing. And I would, I would like to at least say, uh, whatever else we'll cover, that response is really, really important. Yeah. It's, it's a pronouncement of blessing. So that's got to be the best news ever. Okay, good. So I, I didn't even ask a, I, I didn't even ask a yeah. question yet. <laughs> so the beatus, uh, the, the Latin <laughs> yeah. meaning blessed. Thanks for bringing it around. And the, uh, the, the macarisms is another, but that's the yeah, Greek form. Yeah. Makarios is the word itself, but so you can think of them as, um, you know, these are conferred blessings. Yeah. Okay. So let me start you off with the no softball. Question. Okay. Uh, do you say blessed or blessed? Blessed, I think, is the old. Okay. Isn't that the old way? I feel like yeah. It feels isn't old. that like a yeah. old King James type of? I don't know. Yeah. The new way is blessed. Um, but on that, I think it's interesting. I've I feel like this word's been used a lot in recent years in like Christian circles, almost as like a, if someone asks how you're doing, you say, I'm blessed. blessed. It's like a Christian code word for mm -hmm. I'm a Christian. Yeah. Um, or you see it on t-shirts all the time. Yeah. Blessed. It's yeah. like, yeah, hey, I'm a Christian without saying, yeah. you know, t-shirt says blessed. Yeah. Not, I'm a Christian. But that's kind of what it means. And it, maybe it's lost uh, a little bit of its meaning or it's, it's become a little bit broader of a meaning. Oh it's yeah. It's gained meaning over the, past few years yeah we got a couple options i'm not sure which one you'd prefer one is ditch the word altogether which i may have hinted at on sunday mm -hmm. but then thinking about it today which is the value by the way of going from sunday and now thinking about it i might say let's make sure that as at, that our faith family understands the term really well so that if they say to a person i am blessed yeah what do they mean by that they they mean that i am the recipient of divine favor in a badly broken world so and i i am very fortunate yeah. I'm most fortunate. If they know that, then blessed is a good word. Yeah. I Put it on your shirt. I prefer yeah, I prefer that. I'm a I'm a recipient of God's favor in a badly broken world. Yeah. yeah. There you go. It, Make that t shirt. It's a small font, but <laughs> <laughs> No, that's good. Um, so yeah, but I do think with I mean, words they they can change their meaning over the years. They take on new things. Yeah, I think to give have it, a, give it freshness. Yeah, to give a word fresh meaning, um, helps to bring it home in a, in a way that maybe it just grew a little stale. Um, I agree wholeheartedly. There's probably a handful of terms like that in church that we need to not redefine. We need to uh, learn what their definitions mean. And yeah. that's why it is important to, to read well. And uh, for you and for me, for instance, whenever we have the opportunity to make sure that we're diving in as deeply as we can to the translations always lose something. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. our job is to make sure that they lose as little as possible uh, with our ability to go back to the original Greek and Hebrew and Aramaic and so forth. Yeah, no, that's good. Um, so this blessing that Jesus speaks of, is this a future blessing or a current blessing? Yeah, so it is both. both. Uh, and we mm -hmm. talked about it a little bit. So again, um, this week... Uh, I mean, it would be nice to say, uh, let's say you're the one that's, uh, you're having a week that is mostly uh, good news, period. I mean, there's, there's mostly favorable circumstances. Let's say mm -hmm. you're that person that this week is a mostly favorable circumstance week. Yeah. Um, so um, you're able to still only enjoy your relationship with God in part uh, because of your own um uh, your own sinfulness that you continue to bring to the table as your uh, sinful nature reveals itself uh, throughout the week. You're also, of course, locked into a world that is opposed to God's rule. And then you have the supernatural forces of Satan and company at work. So the world of flesh and the devil are at work. So 
even in the in, even in a week for you that is mostly favorable circumstances, you're only able to partially enjoy the fullness of this blessing. So there is a part of it that is future. I, I know you know mm -hmm. these things. It's not like you're uh, no. you you know these things. So the future part of it is when the kingdom comes and there's only good and no evil, as I referred to on Sunday. So for now, for us, it's a little bit of a bummer. Yeah, so the three verses that you covered, for example, mm -hmm. the verse three, yeah. uh, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is, is. the kingdom of heaven. Yep. And then the next two, they yep. shall be comforted, be. they shall inherit yep. the yep. earth. Yeah, and so that's part of, the, part of the problem. If you say one or the other, which one of the grammar has got to take a back seat? Uh, so that's what's important for us. So I would say what you have is you have a mixture. Is that, that's what I'm reading. Verse three, mm -hmm. present tense. Verse four and five, future tense. And so uh, you have both. Okay. Uh, don't spend a lot of time here, but are you going to cover verses six through 11? Yeah. Yeah. Dan Pierce asked me on Sunday. He said, are we going to get the rest of the Beatitudes? And yeah. I said, Yeah. So then, okay, I, okay. then I said something to Michelle. I said, I must have said it in a way I was referring on Sunday to what we were going to do in that service, not not the fact that we weren't going to cover the rest. Okay, because so, yeah. yeah, in the notes, it has <clears throat> verses 3 through 11. That's the other thing I, meant, I, yeah. I uh, did not refer to. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I put it in there because I didn't know how far for a while, how far do we get? Yeah. I knew that service was going to be tight because we had... Uh, we had Eric uh, with the presentation, Taking and then we pictures had of people. yeah, and then we had uh, all the grads. Yeah, so I knew that I knew that things were going to be tight, and so gotcha. Yeah, because people have been asking me nonstop for the last twenty four hours. What's bet, he doing? What's I he bet doing? some people haven't slept. I mean, my inbox was flooded. Yeah. The podcast at CBC yeah. inbox, I bet, was flooded. Yeah. What's he doing with verses seven through or six through the end of the Beatitudes there? <laughs> I said, I don't know. I'll ask him. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, guys. All right. So let's get practical here. Mm -hmm. um, you said in the sermon, and you've said this before, mm. uh, something to the effect of you read these traits, these characteristics, poor in spirit, mourn, meek. Don't say to yourself, don't read these and say to yourself, I'm going to try harder to be that kind of person because these are conferred on us. They're, yeah. they're put on us. Yeah. So don't but, do that first. Yeah, but but then you also say we have to work. We have to work at these things. So yeah. what's the nuance there? What's the balance? And I've got a specific question okay. for you. So it, um, putting the beatitudes into practice, follow the order of of this text. Start with a blessing and ask yourself: Do you believe that that's true, even though circumstances don't seem that way? That should be easier to do now because the whole the whole tenor of the Sermon on the Mount is things are not great for God's disciples except for the blessing. So poor in spirit, mourning and meekness, those are not championed in our day. So it shouldn't be hard to say, wow, this is God's, this is God's analysis. His version of our blessedness, our happinesses is different from the world's. So first, do I believe they, that the blessing is true? Mm -hmm. Second, remember that if you do believe that to be true, then you are the ones who have hope that the, despite the brokenness that you feel that the world faces, uh, you have ultimate hope. The third thing, though, gets to the, 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 the reason. Um, it, uh, let's start there. The third thing that we want to do with this is we want to make sure that we have not drifted away from these character traits which is something that's possible for every one of us at any given moment in our spiritual lives. So yeah. what we do, as we do with all scripture, is we allow the Beatitudes to give us an assessment tool where I can look at myself and say, today, am I dependent on God totally today in a, in a posture of humility? If I am, that's poor in spirit. Remember, that's all that is, is that I think I referred to the F-R-O-G, fully rely on God, that that acronym yeah. that was used mm -hmm. years ago. So I do look at verse three and can say to myself, uh, okay, yeah, I, I am, uh, that's me today. If I've drifted from that, it is my responsibility to, to literally to, 
invite that back, I guess would be a way to say it, to say to God, I've been arrogant toward you. It's time for me to humble myself. Mm. Uh, I, I am because he's created me as, uh, I think I use the, the phrase kingdom made people. So we are being, we, we are created into these things, but not perfectly yet. So there's times when I need to get back to that. Okay. Yeah. So believe it first yep. and believe the divine reality. Now you use yeah. that term. Yes. The divine reality mm -hmm. as opposed to worldly reality. Yeah. Have hope. Yeah. Believe it, have hope, yeah. and then don't drift. And I would say don't drift. I would say when you drift, when you drift, get back to this. Okay. Let let these three that we covered, poor in spirit, mourning, and meekness, make those three a part of your 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 walk today. I am totally dependent on God today. I am someone who is truly saddened by my sinfulness and the sinfulness around me. And also, I am a person who is mild and gentle, not harsh and aggressive. These are traits that God's Spirit has created in me. So when I drift... Mm -hmm these three become my targets. So how would you counsel someone who does an honest assessment of themselves and says to, says to themselves, self, you know what? I don't think you're the most poor in spirit. You're not mournful or brokenhearted over the mm -hmm. sin of this world. Mm -hmm. How would you counsel them to put those things on? Because it's not a go and do this. Go serve the poor. You know, go care for the orphan right. or the widow. Right. It's attitudes. Yeah, these are attitudes. Yeah. So, so how would you counsel someone? Yeah, I think what we do, uh, remember, is what, what we say to people is we say, wait, let me let me take you back to the cross for just a moment and think about how bad I was that Christ had to die for me. What, what kind of shape was I in? Well, uh, it was, I was irretrievably lost. Mm -hmm. So I would take the person back to the cross and say, if you're struggling with arrogance, look at the cross Look at what Jesus did. Look at his example. Yes. But if you truly believe that God's mercy was extended to you when you were his enemy, you, that can't, you can't help but be humbled. So it's very basic. Go back to the cross and, and look at what God did. That is humbling. That's also, by the way, the place to catch his holiness. That's how bad sin is. Mm -hmm. Christ died for my sin. My sin is destructive. So the morning comes from when I see the holiness of God and I think, look at the devastation that our rebellion caused. And then finally, the thing about gentleness and meekness, here's Christ. I mean, he could have obliterated uh, those Jews that were uh, against him, yeah, setting sure. him up with a fake trial. He could have obliterated those soldiers with just a, a breath or a word. So if you talk about meekness and, and gentleness and mildness, Here's Christ submitting to all those things. So it, it's not what you would normally expect, but I can tell you that there's no other way to get to the character of Christ without going back to the cross and saying, I believe he died for me to make me like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we could go further than that if we had a moment. You got like for instance, yeah. let's, take, let's take one that uh, I certainly, and I've said this to accountability partners, I've said it to friends of mine, it is hard. Uh, it is hard not to let pride rear its ugly head. Sure, it's just really hard. So, in those moments when I am cognizant of my self focus, I, I don't know what else. What, what else do you do? You go to God and you confess that. If you if you have a heart that's being molded by Christ, part of that heart involves a sensitivity to the times when I'm, I'm focused on myself. And I need to take that to God and say, God, I'm arrogant today. I'm not, I'm not who you built me to be. Forgive, you know, confession, repentance, forgiveness, uh, replacement, righteousness, a new attitude coming out of that conversation with God. I mean, it's, it's pretty straightforward for a believer. Okay. I would think. Yeah. That's just one example. But. No, I think that's good. I think that's very helpful. Um, okay. Well, that's all the questions. All right, let me do one more, okay? Okay, Listen, shoot. How about I the like guy? It. How about the guy that says to me, because guys, I, I can't, I don't, I can't speak for uh, for women on this issue, but guys in particular, let let's say we're not naturally, we're not naturally 
meek, mm -hmm. that we tend toward harshness rather than gentleness and mildness. It's going to be very difficult for, for a guy like me to say in a moment, all right, I'm, I'm just, I'm going to be mild. It's going to be, it's going to be very, very difficult for a guy to say, I'm going to be mild. Yeah. I'm tired of being harsh and aggressive. I'm going to be mild. No, uh, for us believers, the, the, you know, the beyond Sunday application angle is always, if I get a look at the cross first, the next logical supernatural event in my life is a change. Let's go back to Jesus' sermon, repent. So for me as a harsh individual, that I need to repent of that. Well, that's exactly what Jesus preached. And so that's why like Craig Keener, for instance, he talks about <clears throat> what you're seeing in the Beatitudes is you're seeing a person who's king. They, they are kingdom ready, he says. Mm -hmm. They're kingdom ready because they're in repentance mode. I think that's a good angle. So for the person that is struggling with any of these first three Beatitudes, the place to start, of course, is get a new vision of what the cross means for you and what it says about you. But then also you're in repentance mode if you have ears that can hear and you go to God, you confess your sin and you turn from that sin. That's a supernatural act that every Christian can do. Mm -hmm. And everything to me, everything practical, whatever they would be after that is, you know. Yeah, well, I think just the regular disciplines of the Christian life. We keep you in that yeah. that mind frame, that soul frame. Yeah. yeah. Um, yep. No, that's good. And I think the relationship of uh, a kingdom person to the king, recognizing that he's the king. And so our relationship to the king, yeah. an understanding of the future hope that we have, yeah. just contributes to that blessed, happy state that we can have despite all that's going on around us that would not lend itself in that direction. So. No, that's a great point. I mean, what uh, my relationship to the king, does that contribute to being poor in spirit? It mm -hmm. sure does. Mm -hmm. He's the king. What am I? Yeah, <laughs> just a servant. The, the morning, yep. my relationship to the king, my king is holy. He knows that sin is destructive. Mm -hmm. Well, how does that help me mourn? It does. And then my relationship to the king. Can you imagine a subject like me having a sense of harshness in that relationship at all. Yeah, no. I mean, if there's anything, the, the meekness before a king. So I really, mm -hmm. I really appreciate what you just said. That's, yeah. that's good stuff to think about how our relationship with God it, it automatically pushes us in the direction of these mm -hmm. so far. Yeah. Good you, thought. You've heard the term, like just our posture, you know, mm -hmm. living just, with that relationship in mind, it creates a posture that lends itself again to these, yeah. these beatitudes, these blessed yeah. attitudes. So, yeah. And they and they really do affect the way in which we relate to others. I mean, you think about how dependence on God and humility affects the way in which we relate to other people in our lives. When mm -hmm. we're humble, that's mm -hmm. better. It is. Our mourning over our sin is one way, of course, to, to help us not, destroy the lives of others by our sinfulness. Yeah. And then finally, our meekness. Look at how that plays itself out when we're around faith family. I mean, yeah, it's, not to mention our own family. Yeah, right. So, it's good. It creates a little uh, a little heaven on earth when we have people living the way that Jesus says is yeah. the best way to live, yeah. as opposed to the way that our just natural tendencies take us. And yeah, yeah so it's good reason to follow. Calvary Bible Church is better. Uh, we're better as a group with these character traits, mm -hmm. which is, that's yeah. probably part of the blessing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Know, that kind of community we enjoy. Like, like uh, all of the celebration with Austin on Sunday. I mean, you could just, Austin it, who? Uh, what's his last name? <laughs> is it Burke, Burke Holder. Burke, Burke, Burke Holder. Holder. Yeah, great. Burke Holder. That, that Austin, Austin. Burke Holder. Okay. That There's Austin. a couple. Yeah. <laughs> but that, but that atmosphere was, yeah. you could feel it. It was, it was very, um, it was filled with excitement and yeah. joy and love and harmony. And that was, that was a really, it's mm -hmm. an example. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Good. All right. You, you done? I should be. Okay. Well, you added some extra time here, <laughs> but that's did. good. I think it was My a good fault. discussion. I'm looking forward to verse six next week.
Okay. Do you think gonna, we'll cover those? I hope so. Okay. Just satisfy the people. You let, will you let Dan Pierce know? Uh, no, you can do that, actually. <laughs> I'll let all the other dozens of people know, though. All right. I'll carry that. So thanks for listening. Uh, this week we had some technical difficulties, so I'm hoping there's not a lot of glitches here, but if there were, just fill in the blanks. You can probably do that. You're above average. Um, or you can blame the podcast guy. Oh yeah. The we podcast could, guy. Do that. What's his name? Jordan. Jordan. Jordan yeah. Sittler. If you he want to write to him, we'll give you have his a email address and, and we could give you his phone number. He's probably playing that background music right over top of what we're saying right now. <laughs> He's editing us out. All right. We love you guys. We'll see you next week. Thanks for listening. Thanks again for joining us on today's episode. And remember our Sunday sermons are meant to lead us to a life of worship beyond Sunday. 